Okay, so in this tutorial video, we're going to learn how to use action script and input text and dynamic text to have a user type in their name into or type their name into our game and then return that name back to them in the instructions for the game. So before we actually start using the action script and setting up our screens, um, I've already created the game here that I'm working with. So whatever your project is, whether it's a game like this one or something totally different, you will have to adapt these techniques for what makes sense for your project. So in this one, I have a bunch of layers that were already built and they have some animation. The beginning of my game has an animation and some audio when this comet flies in. And then we have a start button that's going to jump us to the place where they're going to input the name. So that's the first 100 frames. And then as I move down on the 175th frame is where we're going to have this drag and drop game where they can put the planets in the order that they appear from the sun. So notice that that game is only on that one frame because it's not necessarily animation in terms of motion tweens here. Each button is just going to go to a frame and stop and then let users interact and mess with that frame until they're ready to move on to the next. So in between here, we need to have one frame that has an input area where we ask the user what their name is. And then when they click the button to go to the next frame, it's going to return that name to them such as welcome Jessica or welcome Chad. So we need to create that for a screen. So you can put it anywhere you want. You can even put it on the very next keyframe after um, your first kind of intro for this game or wherever you want to put it in your project. I like to give myself some bumper room in case I want to put something in between. So I'm just probably going to go out here to the 120th frame and I'm going to create a blank keyframe in my actions layer. So insert blank keyframe because that's going to allow me to have some action script that affects whatever's on that particular layer. So back here, this action script was affecting this um, this screen right here where it's basically saying, okay, stop at frame 100. And then for the start button, when somebody clicks it, it's going to go to a certain frame and stop. So this is that click to go to frame and stop. So what I want them to do is when they click start, it's going to jump them to frame 120. Now I can do either 120 here so I can give a frame a number or I can actually label the frame, which is my preference. So I'll go ahead and create a new screen input name screen and I'm going to put a blank keyframe on the 120th frame again keep them in line so right click insert blank keyframe and that means that this this screen is going to appear on this particular frame so clicking on this particular blank keyframe I can go up to the label and call this input name screen okay and I don't need to have this appear on any other frame. So I can highlight all of these, right click and choose remove frames. That label is still there. It's just only showing on that one frame. So it didn't have space to show us the entire name, but it is still there. So going back to the frame 100, instead of having it go to frame five, or actually I would normally change it to 120, I'm going to put quote, quote, and then put that exact same frame label. So input name screen and the spaces matter the capitals matter the spelling matters everything matters it has to be exactly the same so just to double check again yep that's right so now when somebody clicks that start button it's going to jump them over to this input name screen now on this particular screen we need to add some information so i'll go ahead and grab my text tool and i will make it white and i'll say what is your name Okay, so I probably need to stretch that out and I need to make this static text because this is not text that they're going to input anything or it's returning anything. It's just asking them, what is your name? And then I already have a button created in here that says instructions. So I'm going to pop that down. All right. So this instructions button is going to need an instance name so instructions underscore btn and now we need to create our input text where are they going to click and actually type in their name in order to do this you click on the text box come up to the text tool and choose input text and then when you click and drag out an area in which they can type 
Unless you have this box pressed, the show border around text, it won't actually show a border. So just be aware of that. And especially with input text, you want that border to be there so that people know that that's where they can click and type. And that's what we're used to with seeing on the web. So that's all there is to creating that input text in terms of actually making it viewable. But we also have to make sure it has a unique instance name and also that we set up the font the way it needs to be. So right now this box is white and our font is Franklin Gothic book and it's white. So when people start typing in here, it's actually gonna type 96 point font in white and they're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change, I'll just leave it Franklin Gothic book, maybe change that to 75 and I don't know what that's gonna look like because I don't see any of the text here right now, but I can test it out later and I'll go ahead and pick that kind of golden yellow. Hmm, I don't know. That that might be. I'll just pick red. Okay. So you can pick whatever you want. I would try to pick an easy to read font. And then just know that it's going to give you a lot of errors if you don't embed your font. So I have a tutorial video on YouTube on how to embed fonts. But just so you can see it, this is Franklin Gothic Book Regular. If I use Franklin Gothic Book Italic, and regular, I'd have to embed both the regular and the italic versions of the font. So you click embed, type the name of the, the font, say what characters you used, and I usually just click all, but if you know you're only using the upper click case or the lower case, or you're going to use both of them, but you're for sure not going to use numerals, then you can kind of make it a, a smaller file size um, in that regard. I just click all because you never know when you're going to put a number or a character in there. So you have to click on that. And then again, don't give this a generic name because then you might embed like several different fonts and then you'll not know which one is which. So this is Franklin Gothic book regular. The next time if I had used Franklin Gothic book italic, I would make sure to change this keyword to italic. So when you embed it, and I've already done it for this particular project, you should see it over here. So this is Franklin Gothic book regular. If this is Franklin Gothic book regular, this is Comic Sans, don't use Comic Sans, but just as an example. And then the Blade Runner font that I have here, I need to embed all of those in, for, in order for this to actually work. Okay, so um, after you've embedded the font, checked on the font style, made sure it's input text, made sure it looked like a box, the last thing you need to do is give this an instance name. So we're gonna call this instance name user name. So this is where we're gonna have the user input their name. Okay, so before we actually start working with the action script, we're gonna create our next screen as well. So I'm gonna go about the 140th frame, right click, insert blank keyframe, because again, I'm gonna have new script that's on that particular frame. And I'm gonna click and add another new layer. And on that particular same frame, I'm gonna insert a blank keyframe so that the artwork only starts happening on the 140th frame. Highlight all the way back, right click and remove frames. So that way each of these screens is only appearing on this one particular frame. So on this one, this is gonna be the dynamic text instructions. And this is where you're gonna add the instructions. So in this particular one, they input their name. When they click here, it goes to the instructions screen. And we want it to be able to say, welcome Jessica or welcome Chad or welcome astronaut Monica. And we're gonna have that return here with all the instructions and then a button to go play the game. So just to get this all straightened out, here's my play button, pop that in there. It looks very consistent. All right, so I'll grab the text tool, come back over here, make sure it says dynamic text. And again, same thing, you're gonna want to change the color. This is not something that they're gonna click in and type. So I don't actually want a box for this. I just want to click and drag a big enough area that shows where that text is going to be. So it's a little bit weird because it looks like it's not there when you click off and it will show up later. It's just going to be text that's brought in through code. So we can't really see what it looks like right now. So <clears throat> if I were to change my stage color though, to maybe this dark or this light gray, See how the te dynamic text has this dashed line? That's how you can tell the difference between static and dynamic um, because most of the time you're gonna use static if it's just information that they need to read. 
But if it's ever going to return something like through code, then it needs to be that dynamic text and you can see it visually with that dashed line. So I'll go ahead and change my stage color back to black. All right. So this one is going to return back the instructions and we are not going to type it in here. We're going to type it in code. We need to also make sure we have the right settings here. We have to embed any font that we use. So I'm going to stick with Franklin Gothic book regular because I know I've already embedded that font. I'm going to make sure that this button is unchecked because we don't need to show that border around text and then make sure you can uncheck that selectable because people don't need to select that text and copy and paste it for any reason. So the last thing with this is with it selected, we just need to make sure to give this an instance name. So I'm going to do instructions user and I'm using camel lettering. So the first word has no capital, but every other subsequent word after that does start with a capital letter. And that's going to matter again when I do code. So in the next video, this is just part one where, where we're kind of setting up our game and, and creating the dynamic and input boxes. We're going to actually add that code. Um, one thing I did notice, let's go ahead and add a frame label here. So instead of having this instructions button jump to frame 140, I want it to jump to the instructions screen. screen. Okay. So again, the benefit of using a frame label is just that if I were to move this frame down a little bit for some reason, and originally if I had the button going to frame 140, if I ever move this to a different frame number, then that script is going to break and it's going to be wrong and it's not going to work. But if I move this frame at any point in time and it has a frame label, that label will move with that frame wherever it goes. So you don't ever have to fix the script if you move things around. So it's a lot more efficient in that regard. Okay, so in part two, you can watch and we will start adding the script to make this function and then test it out and see how it works.